Welcome to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Earth, the chief architect of WOW for a brand called Dynamo Entrepreneur. We support experts in living well and doing good around the world, predominantly speakers, authors, internet marketers, coaches, experts that love supporting other individuals rise up. And do we have one of them here today? Her name is Audrey Simpson Campbell. Hi there. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello. How, How are, are you, you, my friend? <laughs> so amazing. good to have you on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, How yeah, are you? Yeah, you look fantastic. Oh, I, thank I love you. this outfit. I'm flimsy. Yes, you are. You are very much so. So before we get into hypnosis, which I know is a very strong subject with you, we're yes. going to talk a little bit about the journey. Let's talk about, you know, how did you get here? Well, um, I've always been interested in how the mind works. It's been a, a fascination of mind since I was little. Okay. Because it's so powerful. We've got such a lot of power in our mind. And I heard a long time ago, I've got heard that thing that says you only ever use 10%. Yeah. And I thought, I want to use more than 10%. I'm sorry, but I like... Like 11. <laughs> I want to live it. Use it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah as, a, as a, a youngster, I used to really um, be interested in reading and, and following information and that. And I have a fairly big book collection, about 800 books at home. I don't oh, know nice. Yeah, you're but a bookworm too. I'm a very big bookworm. Likewise. I love the uh, self-help books. And, yes. Um, so, yeah, so as I was uh, sort of studying, I went into, uh, my goal when I was younger was to become a research scientist. I wanted to change the world. Right? Nice. Don't so, we all? Oh, don't we all? Uh. <laughs> and as it, as it uh, happened, I happened to be really good at biology. Yeah. So, um, I followed that route and I went to university to study biological sciences. Okay. And whilst I was at university studying biological sciences, um, I came across a book in hypnosis. It was just random. Mm. And uh, it just really appealed to me suddenly. It was like it had this real, um, it sort of touched me on a, on a level I, I didn't expect it because I had known about it hypnosis. It hypnotized for a long time. you. It did. <laughs> 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 but, you know, I'd heard of hypnosis in a sort of um, performance sort of style. Thing before where you'd go on stage and you'd eat an onion or bark like a mm -hmm. dog or whatever. But this was hypnosis for therapeutic reasons yeah. and uh, for, for mind expansion reasons. Yeah. And so I started using it on myself and I found it really, really curious uh, that it was having a, a positive effect on me, even although I was changing very little about what I did. The okay. only thing I was doing is I was using different words, I was using different um, ways of thinking about things, mm -hmm. and it was affecting my ability to retain memory, mm -hmm. to study harder, to have calmness when exams are on. Okay. So of course, you know, that really That's all important me. stuff. Uh, yeah, and if people noticed and they wanted to know more about it because they were saying, what are you doing that's, uh, you're doing some kind of magic, what is it? <laughs> yeah, 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 what is it, what is this <laughs> magic? Yeah. So yeah, so that kind of got me on track, uh, thinking about, you know, how to do hypnosis. But uh, as, a, as a youngster, um, I was fairly shy and I keep getting people, hypnosis is wonderful in the sense that when you start affecting certain parts, certain blocks in your mind, it mm -hmm. affects you systemically. So okay. it can get rid of other things. Okay. So occasionally people will say to me things and I'll go, are you sure that's me? Uh, recently somebody said to me, you're really confident, aren't you? I'm like, mm. in my mind, I'm still the kid I was years ago that was okay. very timid. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. apparently I've dealt with that now, so I'm good. <laughs> 
Now I sense a very strong Torontonian accent. I you know, <laughs> did, did. Did you grow up here? <laughs> well, I'm glad you noticed. No, <laughs> no, I'm a Scottish gal. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, when I, did you come here? I came to Scotland. I came to Scotland. I came from Scotland in 2012. Okay, okay. Um, it was myself and my husband and my four children who came over oh, nice. at that point. Just um, what are the ages of your children? Well, my oldest one has just turned 18. Nice. Yep. Yeah, and then I have the next one is 16, turning 17 in September. Yep. And then I've got an eight-year-old son and a seven-year-old daughter. Very nice. Very and nice. I got a 23, a 12, an eight, and a six. So oh, kind of close to your Good ages. Mix, yeah. 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 It gives you a bit of a yeah. range, right? You one came from a party. Three came planned. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Do you well, go back home? Do you visit Scotland? Occasionally, yes. Yeah. Family's um, still there? All my family are there. We have no okay. family or friends uh, here, yeah. actually. Which well, is I'm your friend now. Oh, you are? Yeah, yes. girl. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey friend. No, yes, yes. <laughs> but it's true, right? Because, uh, you know, um, all my family and friends are there. So it was like a real adventure to come mm -hmm. here, you know? Yeah. It was like, oh, I uh, bet. It, it was like and does your husband do similar work as you? No. Um, he actually, the... the, the the thing that happened when we came to Toronto was a, it was a big shift for us. So my husband and I, we our relationship broke really rapidly oh when we yeah. got here. So it meant that um, he actually works in the, in computer uh, software ar ar architecture. So okay. he creates the architecture behind big yeah. software programs. But um, yeah, so when we got here, um, that one of the challenges we faced was that we had no family or friends here for support. Mm -hmm. So That's our tough, relationship, especially with the kids. Exactly. Yeah. So our relationship kind of uh, disintegrated and uh, very, very dramatically so. So we went from being coming up, we actually travelled over to Toronto on my birthday, the 15th of March, in case you want to buy me a present. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know that. <laughs> on the 15th of March, know that, yes. Uh, 15th of March, 2012. And the time, within 12 months, our relationship had disintegrated completely. So. Um, we had gone, me and the four children had gone back to Britain to visit family in December 2012. And when we arrived back in Toronto on the 18th of January 2013, we had nowhere to live. Oh boy. So we ha we, I was in the airport and I called up the police. I did call the phone, uh, phone the police to check it was okay to go home. And they said, no, you can't go home. But here's the number for central intake, which is the number you get yep. needed to find a shelter. Yeah. And, and suddenly we were without a home and oh we were boy. in a shelter. Mm. And it was a kind of big shock to the system and what I would say is that it hits you as a big shock but the people of Toronto were so friendly and so helpful they just caught us you know I they love gave it. us they get they supported us in finding a shelter to live in that night and mm -hmm. then we we when we the people at that shelter found out the kids school was in North York mm. they said well let's move you into Toronto so they found mm -hmm. us a shelter place in Toronto so we could actually commute to school so many channels of help support of people. to support us. Yeah. What um, would you say would be the greatest gift from an experience like that? There's always a silver happened, lining, you know? Was, was exactly. Well, the thing is, is that when something like that, that happens, it's a shock to your system and you're, you're immediately, your faith in humanity kind of shakes. But then it was completely replaced by f new faith in and humanity. And more, yeah, different. And even more because it, like, these were total strangers. Mm -hmm. People who didn't know us and people who didn't, who, who you know, who just saw us and immediately stepped up and said, let's I help love you. It. And it was, it was beautiful it's to a have great that community. kind of support. It was an amazing community. I'm, I'm so pleased to be part of that. And obviously very grateful. Absolutely. So now you've grateful. moved into this hypnotic professional space. You know, tell us a little bit about that. What well, do you do? Yeah, so originally the plan was, when we first came, the plan was it was all woohoo, big adventure time. Yeah. And the plan was for me to start a business here. and Because yeah. I, I ran a business in the UK, which was yeah. hypnosis as well. I've been doing hypnosis now for nearly 25 years. Okay. Before I was born. Oh, oh. I was going to say, you start when you're three or what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but a long time. Yeah. And then when we moved here, the hope was that it's a whole new environment here. Yeah. And the the, the the demographics are different, so it'll be a different kind of clientele. So mm -hmm. it was exciting. But when that kind of happened, it knocked me off balance a little. Mm -hmm. So um, it took a little while to get settled back in again. And now I'm back on track. I've got um, a hypnosis a practice, which I help individuals, groups, mm -hmm. and I'm also developing courses, mm -hmm. um, online courses, so people from all over the world. That's can amazing. Join. I yeah. heard the online industry is about to boom, you know, the online course industry. Absolutely. You know, it's, they it's, say it's going to be a trillion dollar industry in the next 10 years. Really? Well, That's so, how people are learning nowadays. It's so helpful, right? though, because it means you can reach more people. And I think that's yeah. when you're doing something powerful. That's it. You want to reach as many people as possible. And as much as I love one to one sessions, I love mm -hmm. being in a room with one person and yeah. transforming them. 
but to help people is transform the one to many. That's it. And I know you're an author, correct? Yes, I am. Yeah, so, tell us about your book. Yes, this is my book, uh, Metamorphosis, Path yeah. to Personal Transformation. Yes. Um, I wrote this because, again, this is a way of getting more of me to more people. <laughs> this yeah. sounds a bit weird. But it means that I can transfer more information to more people. It's available on Amazon. Is it? Nessie? Yes, you may. Yeah. You are. Very it's available good. on Amazon.ca, Amazon.com, and Amazon.co.uk. Uh, and it's... It's a nice chunky it. book. It's got lots of information in there that um, the reason for the book is basically to take the, the reader through a transformational journey. That's it. So that when the, the promise of the book is that you'll end a different, when you finish reading the book, you'll be a different person than the person who started reading it in a good way. And the reason for that is to give people, is to like shift perspectives in a subtle way uh, in order for them to to overcome mental blocks, old paradigms, things I that hold them it. back, and then get them on new, a new path. And you're obviously very passionate about it. How do they actually yeah. find you? Well, I am on uh, oh, everywhere, but I'm on Facebook. Audrey yeah. Simpson Campbell Facebook is a great place to connect with me on there. Perfect. Uh, and I'm on other social media too, Twitter and uh, it works. Pinterest and whatever. Uh, and of course, if anyone wants to get in touch with me, I have a website too. My website mm -hmm. is www.audrey.expert. <laughs> very it's good. A, it's a very cool awesome. website. So well, I'd love you. Thank you so, so much for coming on the show. Oh, I'm glad to it's be here. It's been an honor. You. Thank you. This is the Dynamo Show, and stay tuned for our next guest right after this short commercial break. Back to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Ert, the Chief Architect of WOW for Dynamo Entrepreneur. Let's keep things going. I have my dear friend Lou Astor here. What's going on, my How man? How are you, James? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely. I, I must be one of your biggest fans. I've watched this crazy comeback story and transformation it's over the true. past, you know, little while from a man that was like literally down and out to now the top of the world. And we're gonna get into the top of the world, but let's get into the story. And see, I was, I was thinking about that today. You know the whole story because you see me when I first started going back to the gym after I, I got out of the hospital. I did, that's a high five, dude. That's a high five, not too many can come back like that. So yeah. let, let's, let's go pre, you know, injury, and we'll talk a little bit about the youth, you know? It's nice, short, concise answers. So at the end of the day, I was a child, I was 13 years old. I had a 46 inch waist, I was 242 pounds. When I went to high school in grade nine at McCarthy's uniform store, they didn't even have the size that I need. Okay. So my parents had to go to like a Sears for f overweight, fat people, like mm -hmm. big and tall. Yeah. But I was short. So it, okay. it's funny because you got this huge waist and you're short, so you look like a little ball. Basically. Mm -hmm. So you had to have it tailored. Well, I had to get like a very large pan size and mm -hmm. then they'd have to take them all the way in. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So, I mean, so it, how was it that was experience going into high school for you? Well, that's the thing. At the end of the day, it was, it was quite embarrassing. Mm -hmm. uh, it does change you mm -hmm. being so young. Mm -hmm. But then a profound thing happened. I saw. Uh, a person by the name of Greg Lamont. Greg Lamont yeah. is an American cyclist. He won the 1986 Tour de France, and then he was in a hunting accident. He was actually shot by his brother-in-law in a hunting accident. Oh, boy. So he went through the circumstance where he had to make the comeback, mm -hmm. and it was unheard of. Everyone thought and sold him out. Yeah. But in 1989, he came back, and he won the Tour de France. Amazing. I was completely inspired by that. Yeah. And that for me is always what set a tone in my life mm -hmm. is those inspirational comebacks, those dramatic stories mm -hmm. that leave the legacy behind. Yeah, beautiful. That even when you're gone, it speaks for you. Truth, truth. And it's powerful. It is, it is. And then you went into university or did you do any like get into the job force? What did you do then? No, so I lost the weight <clears throat> and then what ended up happening was I went into other different worlds. I actually got my CSE and my CPH. I wanted to become a stockbroker. Okay. Um, I actually was in Lisbon. 
Yeah. I had an opportunity to go to Lisbon, Portugal. Yeah. And there was a lot of things that I didn't quite like. Yeah. Uh, you're familiar with the story of Wolf on Wall Street? Of course. And so it's, there's a lot of that going on. And at the end mm -hmm. of the day, there's no rules in Europe. And so I came yeah. back and I said, this isn't for me. Yeah. The only thing that made that huge difference in my life, mm -hmm. the, that profound difference, was when I was working out and made those changes with myself. And I said, at the end of the day, what could be more inspirational, more profound, mm -hmm. more gratifying to me with those changes that I made? Mm -hmm. It was a game changer, James. My life was night and day different. I bet. I said, I want to be an agent of that kind of change yeah. for other people. Healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle and also too like a game changer where at the end of the day, it's a whole new life that you get. Truth. Now tell us. Okay, the curtain fell. Yeah, so at the end of the day, uh, <clears throat> I got into competitive bodybuilding and I did very well. I made it to the national level. Mm -hmm. But I didn't find that uh, you get the same kind of credentials or people don't look at you the same way as they would, let's say, like a Greg Lamont mm -hmm. or even a Lance yeah. Armstrong. Just from the stereotypes and the... You know, Absolutely. The way people look at the industry, you know, yeah. Right. So, I didn't want to be the stereotypical person, and I, I found that I started to kind of maybe fit into that model for the eyes of some. Yeah. So what ended up happening was, I decided to take a, a combination mm -hmm. of two things: the cycling, and the training, the weight training, mm -hmm. the power strength sport, and I tried to combine it together and track cycling, which I always liked, which would be mm -hmm. like a 100 meter sprinter yep. on a bike. On a bike, that's right. Power strength, right? Yep, 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 yep. And then the accident. So I'm going through the intersection, there is a 66 year old man in a Ford Explorer making a left hand turn. I don't know exactly what happened. This mm -hmm. is a documentation by the police officer on the scene. Okay. I have a vague recollection, I do need some cueing. Mm -hmm. So if you take me to the intersection, it brings back a memory of some sort. Okay. But the thing is, I need something to cue me in on it. Gotcha, right? gotcha, gotcha. And at the end of the day, that's the issue, is if you take me back there, I feel something emotionally. Yeah. That tells me something happened there. I see. So I'm going yeah, through the green trauma. light, he's making a left-hand turn, he hits me, I'm in a coma for three days. Mm -hmm. I'm in the hospital for five months. Mm -hmm. I suffer a fractured skull. Oh man. Yeah, and, and also too, um, once again, after the fact, it took two years to figure this out. I was called post-traumatic strabismus. Okay. So the third eye muscle was stuck mm. in a downward position. Oh boy. So the right, eye, the right eye is seen, the left eye is seen too, but the problem is the images are overlapping. Okay. And that's the message that goes into your brain. Mm. And with the left eye, there's also what's called a, a clockwise torque. Mm -hmm. So it feels like the world is tipping over to the left. And these are very powerful messages that are being sent straight to my brain. Yeah. So at the end of the day, these things were resolved by great. a great neuro-ophthalmologist surgeon by the name of Dr. Kraft. Mm -hmm. And he's fantastic. Amazing. And, right. So at the end of the day, it's not perfect, mm -hmm. but it's absolutely a million times better than How would you say recovery was. like as a whole on a scale of one to ten? That would have been like, you know, we'll call it a one from that time to now where are you back recovered? I don't like to use my own particular observation because that would be subjective. I would use the professional okay. opinion. Yeah. They told me that I would be considered one in a million. And they didn't just say it once, yeah, they said you're lucky to be alive, times. man. Like that's awesome. Like your stories and so inspirational and just watching you even on yeah. social media coming to where you've come from to now i mean that's one of those stories it's the the greg lamont story you know it's and you see exactly me that. a portion of the you're way living through. it right yeah. so at the end of the day there are things that were said in the past and i really take to certain things that move me mm -hmm. and there was one that says be your own inspiration that's it be your that's own it. inspiration and I've I done it, it before. I put a picture up of me competing at 33. I'm 45 now. I'm looking to there do it go. again. Yeah, there you I go. love it. Where do you see yourself in five years? What's Lou doing? Well, I started LA Training Lifestyle Consultants. Mm -hmm. What that is for is basically getting together, capturing a position or a place in the market where we help people to accomplish their goals. I love it. It's something I've done before. Yep. However, 
I want to make it bigger. Awesome. Bigger, awesome. better, more magical. Because at the end of the day, people need inspiration. I love it. On a final note, how do they actually find you in LA training? Social media, I have yeah. some stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, it's easiest to locate me on Facebook. Awesome. Right. Lou Astry, thank you so, Lou so Astry. much for coming on the show, my man. Great to be here. Okay, thank you so much. This is James Erd. I'm here with Lou Astry, and we will see you right after this short commercial break. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Earth, the Chief Architect of WOW for Dynamo Entrepreneur, a brand that supports experts in living good at the right place, at the right time, with the right people. And do we have the right people on set here today with me? His name is Mr. Neil Goldhar. Yes, sir. Good to yeah. have you. I love your haircut. <laughs> we'll start there. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get it just like yours because yeah. I thought, you know, being on the show, it would be perfect for uh, us to look kind of similar in that area. It's good. It's yeah. good. Hopefully we're not confusing anybody. Yeah. Uh. Or, or shining the lights too much on anyone. It's an honor to have you on the show, Neil. You know, I'm definitely one of your biggest fans. I've uh, watched you evolve over the past couple of years. And before we get into talking about, you know, the business of Neil and enlightenment and empowerment, et cetera, which is, you know, part of the now and the present moment, et cetera, let's talk about the past, okay? Let's okay. go there because, you know, we all have a journey, you know? And it was the now at that time. Yeah. However, we're going to speak a little bit about how you got here. Great, yeah. great. So basically, uh, started when I was a kid, and okay. I had four strikes against me. So I basically had a speech impediment, and I okay. uh, couldn't say certain letters. Uh, when I was a baby, I needed a hernia operation. Oh, wow. So, um, a baby? Yes. Oh, man. Yeah, so my mother had to hold me for six weeks and make sure I didn't cry or would it get worse. Uh-oh. Yes. Uh -oh. So uh, I, I felt like since that moment, I held in a lot of pain, a lot mm -hmm. of suffering, and, and I couldn't really express it because I believe from that place in my life, mm -hmm. I learned to hold it in. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And then I had a asthma situation where I couldn't run that much or, or perform that well, or I would have the asthma act up, mm -hmm. so I would be benched more than I would act participate in the sports or activities of the children around me or my peers around me at the time mm -hmm. and then my last one I had a low immune system so I was sick more than I was well oh boy okay yes and when did this start to subside so, uh, it started to subside at the age of seven seven okay yeah, yeah but yeah. for seven years this was built up in me creating a lot of low self-esteem a lot of low self-worth a lot mm -hmm. of issues around really engaging in the social environment mm -hmm. and I started to really feel like I didn't actually um, participate as well as I could have mm -hmm. in my social surroundings because of my low self-worth and my low self-esteem and it's been a journey to really change that. You know it's interesting too when you're that age and that is the card that you're dealt you don't really know any different. You know, that is your life, you know, yeah. and as you're going through that, the people around you probably observe and they see a big difference in what you're going through comparative to other children of that age. But that's something that you had to learn to cope with and deal with because those were the cards you were given, oh, yeah. right? And then, and then when you got older, now you're starting to connect the pieces. Well, maybe this was because of this and this was because of this. So where did it all start to change for you? So in my early 20s, I said, that's it enough mm -hmm. and I wanted to make that change where I wanted to see my worth and I wanted to let go of how worthless I felt in my upbringing okay. and it all was also partly due to my father who taught me about empowerment since the age of four mm -hmm. so uh, my father brought it into my household teaching us always about 
how to really find the spiritual aspects of life and mm -hmm. how to uh, really develop ourselves into a more spiritual way, mm -hmm. starting with uh, the book, first book he ever bought, which was Jane Roberts, mm -hmm. and then he also bought uh, Wayne Dyer book, and, and yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. he listened to a lot of audio tapes and changed his life around, mm -hmm. and so that was... So he was big the, into personal development. Absolutely. He, yeah. he was very much uh, a big as a big aspect for him was personal development and, mm -hmm. and, and enlightened understanding. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that created the nugget in me that mm -hmm. when I was in my early 20s, I wanted to change that. So I started to reach out and seek courses and seminars myself and, and anything I could to better myself. Now, did you did you do this with your father? I mean, at a young age of like, you know, the teens and the 20s, we rebel against our parents. Were you rebelling or were you kind of there with him and learning with him and growing with him? Well, it's interesting because my mother comes from a Jewish background. Yeah. And my father comes from an, came from an enlightened background, understanding, and he negated the Jewish community mm -hmm. to pursue more of the spiritual realm. So I had a dual um, belief system in mm -hmm. me and for years I wondered which one was the better way because mm -hmm. my mother was an advocate of Judaism and, and really believed in it and I said yes there's some great great aspects with those um, you know coming together with the family and, and enjoying uh, holidays together mm -hmm. and, and things like that but then again my father always was about well, th there's a lot of rules in religion, and there's a lot of rules in really coming to play a place to see there, there's a controlling mechanism there, and, and mm -hmm. we're unlimitless beings. So, yes. so at the same time, there were these two dichotomy understandings going on, mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to um, respect both my parents. Of course. And I of wanted course. to acknowledge For them and reason. honor them and mm -hmm. I wanted to be the good son that uh, mm -hmm. they can really trust and value as well and, and uh, they, you know, were, they're great parents. I mean, my mm -hmm. mother taught me how to love and, and, mm -hmm. and she's a lo loving being that goes around and, and really is helping uh, out wherever she can and, yep. and, uh, and just an amazing woman. And my father too, he has a great deal of wisdom and also is a loving man in mm -hmm. uh, a lot of ways. And, and uh, he has a great deal of compassion for mm -hmm. people. And, and really, if anyone came to him to ask for something and needed some kind of talk with him, he's always there to really be supportive in that way. Of course, that's awesome. Now, I know, like, even with the work that you do now under, you know, Enlightened Leader kind of training, um, you know, that says a lot, obviously, from the path that you chose. You know, do you still pull elements from both? You know, I mean, having been brought up by both parents with two different sectors, two different belief systems, etc., cetera, um, are you still utilizing both? Are you still respecting both? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There, there's a lot of positives in both aspects. And, Truth, and, yeah. And, and, I always said, even in my book, I said, uh, I got the love from my mother and the wisdom from my father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I bring them together to really evolve into a great being all the time because my belief is to really get to a place where you keep on wanting to pursue evolution. Mm -hmm. and, and what that means is the enlightened leader and, and coming out with that. And, and it, it's been a uh, great journey to bring both together, which is the love mm -hmm. and um, and the wisdom. Were there any big challenges like in your 20s or 30s? Yeah, well, it started with going to seminars and, and I wanting to change my ego because my ego was really telling me, like I said, I wasn't worth it and, mm -hmm. and I was insecure. Mm -hmm. And I'd go to these seminars and I'd hear everyone beating up the ego, saying yeah. the ego Edge is God bad, out. edging God out. Mr. Wayne Dyer, R.I.P. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And it never sat well because how can we be loving beings and have this ego that's bad? Yeah. So it's either we're all part of love and that's a myth. Mm -hmm. or I don't know something didn't sit right at the time for me and that's when I started to pursue my own equation of the ego my own model of the ego mm -hmm. and come to understand what the ego really is about which is 
a great support system for who we are as spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. So it's the confidence that cool. helps us to really become the spiritual and passionate beings that we're meant to be. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Now, where do you see Neil in like, let's say five years? On many different stages. I would speaking. love- Speaking. Speaking. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to speak in different cities and in uh, different, uh, I, I would love to become a global speaker. Traveling around the world. Traveling around the world. Li lifting people up, empowering them. Yes. Yeah. I would also, uh, my passion also is about being an author and really going to book signings and shaking hands with the many, yeah. inspiring them to I say, like you are an amazing individual and I'm here to help you see that because I'm just like you and you we're equal to each other. I just may have some wisdom at the time that could help, but and I am versa. you. <laughs> yes, and you are me. We're gonna come back to that, okay? Hold that thought. Here we are with Neil Goldhar, the enlightened leader. We're gonna be back right after this short commercial break. One. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Ert. I am sitting here with the one and only Mr. Neil Goldhar. Yes, sir. Let us continue on the path of becoming an enlightened leader. Okay. How do we do that? And how do we do that with you? So one thing I've come up with is we are all part of one of five types of leaders. And what that means is uh, the levels of leaders that I have described goes from victim to victimizer to motivator to inspirer to enlightened leader. And when we're at the enlightened leader stage, we're all about coming from our heart and having the calm confidence to do so. And what does that mean? That's really about connection, which is taking interest in the world around us mm -hmm. and taking interest in each other and, and asking the questions mm -hmm. as to the curiosity of another because mm -hmm. it's important to be curious about each other because we're all having variety and I, variety is an amazing thing because mm -hmm. it really creates flavor in this world like i yeah. love going to the different festivals for mm -hmm. that reason i know for, you're doing zomba you're doing carnival oh yeah you know, yeah you're, carabana you're, oh i love it yeah you're spicy absolutely yeah because yeah, it's it. the flavor of life that's it that's yes it. Yeah. and then i it's all also about exploring our passions which is yes. the knowledge skills and abilities we're excited to give to others yeah because that is essentially what we need to be focused on is our passions mm -hmm. and that's where we're going to excel mm -hmm. we excel at what we're excited about because mm -hmm. that's telling us who we are that's right and, yeah, yeah. and what you focus on expands. Yes. Yeah. And then the third aspect is the purpose. Mm -hmm. So which is the why? Mm -hmm. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. What is my legacy I am living? Mm -hmm. Not just leaving behind, but living right now to inspire others, to engage with others, to collaborate with others, mm -hmm. so we can really fulfill a mission while we're here on this planet. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is, like I said, the calm confidence which is about looking at why I'm successful rather than why I'm, uh, why I'm a failure and then trusting in the unknown, becoming known of who I am and really respecting that and appreciating that, going into a place of going into the I will, which is about support and motivation, yep. and then the I do, which is opening up yourself to the possibilities of the core desires that you want to fulfill. Mm -hmm. So everyone has a core desire in them that they want to achieve. What's your core desire to, to fulfill? Well, it's to be the world speaker. Yeah. It's to be a uh, international best-selling author. Yeah. It's to be a coach. What's your book called? 
So my first book was called Ego's Way, Experiencing yeah. Greatness Only, which is all about how to have a healthy ego. Mm -hmm. My second book is called Choose Your Adventure, which uh, different authors came together to tell their tenacious stories. And my third book right now that I'm creating is called Right Place, Right Time, Every Time. Isn't that the truth? Yes. Mm -hmm. And when we're an enlightened leader, we're actually going to attract those opportunities so that we feel like we're in the right place at the right time every time. But and I love that word, attract. It's very different because we're so, we're brought up to hunt and to seek mm -hmm. and to search rather than like attracts like, you know, be the most bright, shining, beautiful inspiration that you can be not only for you but for the world and the world will come to you. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because it's all about when you shine a light, you mm -hmm. allow others to shine their light. Like moss to a flame. Yes. I love it. And when they shine their light, that's when the bright places happen. Mm -hmm. And that's when we come together to see we are truly one because we are. And we look at then connections because mm -hmm. that is what fills our soul, mm -hmm. those deep connections, those intimate moments, those inspired ways to really say, hey, I'm you and you are me. I love it. I love it. And then when we connect together, not only, you know, as one, but now finding other individuals that we can elevate through the ranks as well to get to the level that we're at. That yes. is true transcendence. Yes. That's moving from self-actualization to now transcendence where you're not only empowering others to just have their basic needs, you know, as in the Maslow's paper, but to actually have them evolve to their highest level. Absolutely. Right. And that's why I love working with entrepreneurs. Yeah. Because entrepreneurs are those individuals that say, I'm ready for something different. I'm ready for something new. I'm ready for something more. Mm -hmm. so, something to create myself as an individual, but also as an inter interdependent being mm -hmm. so we can support each other along a new path of really letting go of a system that controls us to a system that allows us to be more of who we are and a system that helps us to grow into who we're meant to become and the entrepreneur world is such an amazing world for that because these are the individuals that accept that and allows mm -hmm. that and want and needs to prosper needs to grow needs to create alignment within themselves so they can really not only function in their business but function with their relationships and function with all other aspects of the world bringing it all together it's interesting you say it allows them to be versus allows them to do mm -hmm. right so people working in the corporate rat race you know is do 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 busy getting busy you know and you know getting ready to get ready whereas in the entrepreneurial space we have the ability to do all that but we're also very good at being and we're being ourselves yes. we're being that light we're being that beacon of light that attracts others and we inspire we inspire the world we don't basically you know i don't even like the word teacher i like the word guide because we're inspiring others by being that light guide by shining our light as bright as we can to allow others to do the same that's why I call myself a synchronicity guide. Synchronicity guide. Yes. Yeah. Because when we can really embrace law of attraction, we can really embrace everything we totally want and help us to look for those opportunities. Now, I know you're a law of attraction expert, so why don't you share with our audience a little bit about the law of attraction for those that don't understand it? So the law of attraction is essentially a energy in motion. So what that means is what I put out is what I'll receive. So if you can think of a situation where you had positive momentum and positive energy and positive thoughts, usually what happens, or all the time what happens, is that will come back to me. So again, I've talked about the five types of leadership, victim, victimizer, motivator, inspirer, and enlightened leader. And in any of those places that is what we will attract so as an enlightened leader we have the option and the ability and law of attraction will bring us all those opportunities and that's why i have created a enlightened leader coaching program that not only takes you 
to becoming an enlightened leader to finding the opportunities, but now to sustain it. And so I've created a six-week coaching program that really helps to identify your core values, create the character style, also uh, create uh, clear intentions, go into creating positive emotions, calm confidence, and conducting inspired action, which will give all the tools to stay an enlightened leader unless we choose otherwise. So, and it all becomes a choice. I mean, that's why I love going into different- Ultimately, yeah. Yeah, that's why I love going into different situations to say, hey, I can bring this out of me and fit into the world and connect with the world. Anywhere. Yes, and then in other places, I choose another part of me so I can connect in that situation and the world becomes our oyster and it becomes a playground and it becomes the most amazing experience that we will ever live in and towards and that's when we truly are living in our legacy because then we're a beacon lighting the light for others to join us. I love it. And on a final note, one wish for the world and the humanity in it, what would it be? To really stay inspired and to really say thank you, James, for being an amazing mentor and for really ha having us work together on this show. It's been such an amazing place to come to look to watch you in action and watch others get inspired with their entrepreneurship and you have been such a uh, amazing legacy in itself to have me witness and be part of and thank you mr neil goldhar for just being mr neil goldhar and doing what you do at the right place at the right time and almost always actually always with the right people Boom. This is the Dynamo Show. I am James Earth. That's Neil Goldhart. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Namaste, my friends.